rush is upon us. It's week 12 of the NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And a glance here at the man calling the plays under center, their 6'4 quarterback. I read something prepping for this game that he said prior to, and I think he really said it a few months ago. Down, and Lobo. On the ground, this is Derrick Henry. Only a couple for him there on the game's first play, and it's second down. And here's the offense now. Charles, who's the guy you chose to highlight? The tone setter, the guy in the middle, Alex Mack. His return, never good for the opposition. They'll run for the first time with Philip Lindsay, and that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that, got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. A little trouble thus far on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 11. Ready, ready. Looking to throw. He'll get this to Philip Lindsay complete. And this play going to be stopped in its tracks at the 32 and obviously well short of the first down. There's an example of good situational football being played by a defense. They understood where the third down play was, the down and distance, and made sure that they didn't get anywhere near that bringing up fourth down. Yeah, they were sniffing out that marker, didn't want to let him get close to there, and now a likely three and out to start. Yeah, I love the way they rallied to the football, got to him, and made sure he didn't give up much run after catch. To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Here come the Seahawks in their offense now under veteran head coach Pete Carroll. And they will be led out by their 6'3 quarterback. And what's a quarterback's best friend? Balance? I think you're right. <laughs> I agree with you. You know, a lot of guys would say great receiver, right? A terrific offensive line. But I agree with you, balance, because if you can run the ball effectively, that just opens things up for guys who want to throw it and gives you easier passing lanes and easier coverages to read. And they said balance will be a focus in this one. Yeah, they don't want it all just heaped on his shoulders, I don't believe. I think they want to make sure they take some of the pressure off. Second and nine now from the 21. Second and nine now. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And we take a look at the starting lineup defensively. When Zach Brown's name comes up, I only think of one thing, and that's speed. His ability to elude blocks, run down ball carriers, chase quarterbacks, he does it all. In fact, I believe he still holds a record at the University of North Carolina for the indoor 60-meter dash. How about that for a linebacker now playing in the NFL? Back to throw. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. That one good for 14 and a Seahawk first. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. And they'll try the jet sweep here. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. They'll drop the throw. He's got this complete to Ryan Switzer. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. The reception good for seven. It's third down. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drop. A battle for it, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Keanu Neal. And bulldozing his way through. 
And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. So here is the home side to take over on offense. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got a look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. See if they open things up. Let's see what the defense. And this is going to be intercepted. Eddie Jackson picks it. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And, you know, certainly a lot of football left to be played. We're not into December yet, but right now where we stand, they're first place in their division, looking good, looking to be a threat come January. And let's think about what every team has in their goals, all right? Number one goal is what? Make the playoffs. Number two goal is win your division. Number three goal, and the biggest goal, I think, is to be the highest seed possible that you can be heading into the playoffs so that you can have as many home games as possible to try and get you to the Super Bowl. And right now fighting for everyone possible to try to at least secure home field for the wild card and or divisional round. We're scoreless after one. Two runs for a net gain of nothing. Now here's third and ten. They're going to look to throw. And that is incomplete. So it doesn't look like they're going to be able to build off the turnover. Well, the defense certainly did its part. It got them the football. But you're exactly right. It looks like they're going to have to punt this one away. And it's not a turnover, but doesn't it feel like one after grabbing the momentum with the defensive play? Yeah, and they had all that momentum after getting the football, and now zapped right back in the other direction. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. Fielded at the 20. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. So here is the home side to take over on offense. And this is a unit that, to be frank, doesn't look like they've woken up yet. I mean, a punt and a turnover on their first two drives. And I think the game's starting to take shape a little bit now. And I'm going to take it to the basketball world. When you're having trouble scoring or moving the ball in basketball, what do they do? Get it to their best player, right? Find a matchup, create it, exploit it, and try and move the football. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. On first and 10, it's Lindsey. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Here's a second and seven. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 39. They'll look to throw here on first down. Well, obviously, red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him think. Yeah, that yeah he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then he curls back inside for the completion. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. They'll set up to throw. He's got green. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 
It's a 13-yard pickup as the downs reset. Two minutes on the clock in what's been a scoreless first half. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. Got a man. It's Brown. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. Here's second and eight. He'll find Lindsey here. This carry brought to an end at the eight. Good stick skills, but not much room to operate. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. He'll look to throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Now Harrison Butker for the field goal try. From the right hash, and this one just a chipping. And the kick by Butker is good. And we have action on the scoreboard just before halftime. It's 3-0. Been a bit of a dogfight thus far into the second quarter now, and we do have our first points, a field goal. Yeah, a lot of people say, wow, first action on the scoreboard about time to me. The action's been right there on the field, trying to figure out who could gain an advantage, gain some field position, finally get points on the board. I'm loving this kind of game. <laughs> it feels like kickers might play a big role in this one. Yes, make sure you give them the respect they deserve. They could cost you a game or a win you won. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. You're down three under a minute to go. How aggressive are you going to be in this spot? Not as aggressive as I probably would want to be. Only down three. I mean, it might as well be even going into the half. That's not a deficit that makes me want to push it and potentially make a mistake in this situation and cost myself even more points. But boy, getting into field goal range and tying it, that's tempting. Awfully enticing. You almost talked me into it. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. That's into the hands of the tight end, Ellison. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. They'll lift to throw here. That's caught inside the 20. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Ryan Switzer, his second touchdown on the season. And the Seahawks have taken the lead. And while that touchdown does not give them an insurmountable lead, it's still a lead, and that always feels good to a team. They'd love to take that into the lockers, but a little time left on that clock, so some work to do. I like that. I like how you're guarding against a letdown there. Marty looking forward. Coaching them up from right up here in the booth. Will Lutz on for the point after. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And the Seahawks capping it off with a touchdown. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Green brings it in. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. 
He'll drop to throw. He's going to look deep down the field. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Second and 10. And he's going to be swallowed up. Sacked back at the 45-yard line. Now the offense will burn their third and final timeout. They'll look to throw as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. And they're going to take a timeout defensively. So with fourth down coming up, they go ahead and burn it and say we'll see what happens. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll kick it away for the second time. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. Likely time for one final snap as they start out first and 10. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we've come upon halftime with the visiting Seahawks. They're out in front. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman in our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. An abbreviated halftime show as we get rolling to quarter three. This is taken at his four. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So here are the Seahawks ready to take over on offense. They've won two straight, and they lead this one as well as they come up on first and 10. They'll start the third quarter here on the ground. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. A loss of two there. Second down. I think it's pretty evident we can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, he ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Oh, and now he bowls him over. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. He's gonna fire one deep, middle of the field. Oh, incomplete, nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get him to fourth down. A lot of contact there, but there was no way it appeared that he was going to get a flag on that one. Looking for it, but he wasn't going to get it. And as an ex-defensive back, you love it when they let you play and jostle downfield. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for Seattle. He's taken down here by his face mask by the looks of it. And a penalty flag is going to give a much better starting position. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. The face mask moves him all the way out past the 40 now for first down. And that's incomplete. Here now is second and ten again for the 41. Now back to throw. Got a man on the right sideline. That's Clayton. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. A gain there of 21 yards. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. A first down carry for Henry. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. A gain of three, second down. 
On second down, a run with Lindsey. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. Out of the gun now on third down. This one complete to the running back, Lindsey. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. Call it a gain of three, and it'll be fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Now stopped him in his tracks. A 47-yard attempt. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. So he splits the uprights and has to be a nice feeling. Right when it left his foot, knew it was good. Yeah, just like a good three-point shooter in basketball, right? Release the ball, fall back on defense without even looking. You know it's going in the hoop. This will be taken in at the 1. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. They run a draw here on second down. And this one also slow and developing as he's maybe getting back here to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. Delayed give there out of the gun. Defense was ready. And I'm not a big fan of a draw play out of the shotgun formation because the quarterback's not having much action where he's getting away from the line of scrimmage. He's catching the football, making a little head fake, and then handing it off. You should be able to read it as they did there. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Trying to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Three quarters have come and gone. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back, everybody, to Oklahoma City. This one's still anybody's ball game. It's a one-point difference here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. Second and two. And he will find his man on the outside. Seven yards there and a first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Some good games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. That one good for 14 and a Seahawk first. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. It's a gain of 15, first down Seahawks. Defensively, they're okay with that. Short little route, tackle him inbounds. Okay. All right, cliche alert. It's time for someone to make a play because they've got to have something bigger downfield. They can't just take what they give them. They've got to force it and make something big happen for them. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. And this is caught 
for a touchdown. Now hold everything here. Flag in the backfield. This one might be coming back. That one on Brian Bulaga. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. A play action fake. They'll look to throw. And he's going to go down here. A sack. They push him back to the 34. Harold Landry. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. Yeah, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Check 52. Back to throw here. And he's going to go down again. Jabal Sheard able to record his fifth sack of the season. But well, takes a start to have a good drive, quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. He'll look to throw. Completes it to the fullback hand. They get 13, but it's not nearly enough. And it'll be fourth down. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield. And oftentimes, it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense. Because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. So a big one coming now for Will Lutz. Spotted at the left hash, this from 45. Oh, they get to the football, it's blocked. It's picked up, a live ball here, remember. But when it all comes together and you get the field goal block that's been designed, that's been drawn up, everyone has to feel good about on that side of the ball. How about that one there, to the left side, Knew what they had. That's where they wanted to be. And they got their designated guy turned free. The situation for him offensively as follows. Down on the scoreboard. At time, a huge factor. Now they're losing streak. In danger of continuing as they come up on first down. So now a chance for points in the opposite direction after the blocked field goal. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Gets this into the hands of the tight end, Higby. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. Fourth quarter, two minutes on the clock in a tight one-point game. Watch Twitch. So it's our home team here in possession of the football as we come back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. He'll look to throw. Open man is Higby, the tight end. And he'll get it down here to the 43. They'll look to throw. That completion helps out in a nice way. Now they can take a little bit more time. But... And the pressure will get to him. He goes down. Now there is a flag on the play, but this looks like holding on the offense. So they will take the sack instead of the penalty. And it takes another down off the series, but the biggest one of all, do you want to tell the guy who just got the sack that it no longer... And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield, and it's caught. Touchdown. A big play there. His first touchdown on the year, and his guys are going to retake the lead. Might be seeing that one on the highlight shows tonight. The home run ball here in the fourth quarter to take the lead. There's nothing like being aggressive, preaching that to your team, 
and then following through all the way through go ahead and throw one more up there why not been a great game and we are not done yet all right now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come they'll try and throw for it and he's got it so the two-point conversion is good and they add on to their fourth quarter lead. And of course, on the two-point try, had the option to run or pass. They pass it there, and it works. Felt pretty straightforward, didn't it? An open receiver, ball's put on him, two points for them. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Clock rolling here, about to hit 30 seconds. Back to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. He's going to let it fly. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Well, these corners, I tell you, they've done excellent work all game long. They remind me of guys in the past who just said, hey, throw it out here 100 times. Nothing good is going to happen. And if you throw it in the wrong place, I'll take it the other way. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. Let's go, defense. He's back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Jabal Sheard. And that'll be just about all she wrote for this one. chance for points in the opposite direction after the block field goal. Derrick Henry. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And we've got a timeout. Nine seconds remaining. The previous run good for nine. Here's second and a yard. That one looks like he'll throw here. Got him in. It's Brown. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. And they'll indeed take a knee. And now we'll get a timeout here. They're able to stop it with one second to go in this game. So second and goal and the big man Henry alone in the backfield. And they will take a knee here. So plenty of smiles for the folks here as they head for the exits. It's a victory for their hometown guys. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better. Whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out.